हेलो एवरीवन वेलकम बैक टू द ऑनलाइन सेशंस ऑफ द मटेरियल साइंस एंड मेटलर्जी माय सेल्फ विवेक परिक टेकिंग द लेक्चर्स ऑन द यूनिट नोन एज एन मेटालिक मटेरियल एंड टिल नाउ वी हैव डिस्कस्ड अबाउट द डिफरेंट टॉपिक्स दैट आर नोन एज एंड डिफरेंट टाइप्स ऑफ द फ्रैक्चर वी हैव सीन वी हैव गोन फॉर द माइक्रो मैक्रो एग्जामिनेशंस वी हैव स्टडीड देन वी हैव गोन फॉर द थिंग दैट इज द स्पार्क टेस्ट आफ्टर दैट हाउ वी कैन प्रिपेयर अ माइक्रो स्पेसिमेन दैट वी हैव सीन आफ्टर दैट वी हैव डिस्कस्ड अबाउट द कंस्ट्रक्शन एंड द वर्किंग ऑफ द माइक्रोस्कोप हाउ डज इट वर्क एंड नाउ वी आर लेफ्ट विथ सम ऑफ द यू टॉपिक्स एंड दैट वी विल बी डिस्कसिंग इन अवर टू डेज लेक्चर so starting with the first one that is known as an etching process now we have studied that after the application of the etchant there is the thing means a particular material can be visualized under the microscope that means it is used to bifurcate the thing that is the grain boundaries and your particular grains then the two different types of the, if it is an alloy then two different materials can also be find out with the help of this etching process now what is this etching process what is the mechanism which is there behind this thing? Thing. that is it is done on a polished surface so that a structure information can be obtained under the microscope what is the mechanism in some cases whenever the etching reagent is applied on the polished surface what will happen the particular corrosion effect will take place and the degradation of the material will occur the degradation of the material one phase of the degradation will occur or the grain boundaries will get degraded let us see in the single phase alloy what does it happen the structure consists of the grains which is a pure metal then they are the separated the different types of the phase they are separated by the grain boundaries what will happen in each grains they are having a different orientation and they are bifurcated with the help of the grain boundary so to go for that thing whenever you are applying the etchant what will happen the grain boundaries will get corroded faster and as a result light will not come reflected back very fast so what will happen the grain boundaries area will appear dull whereas the phase of the grain will appear brighter enough so that is why what will happen under the microscope you can bifurcate the things that whatever the grains are there and whatever the grain boundaries we can bifurcate and we can get the information from that particular thing let us see how does it look so over here you can see the grain boundaries is there over here we have corroded this thing that means the light will not reflect back the light will not reflect back you can see over here certain corrosion is done whereas the grains which are there the light will directly reflect back and as a result it will appear bright enough whereas the darker portion will be appear why because there is a scattering of the light taking place in this way we can find out the grains and grain boundaries can be bifurcated in a two phase alloy if you are taking a copper and a tin then if we want to bifurcate the thing then for that thing also this etchant is used so to bifurcate that two things we are going for this etching process the anodic region that means in a two metal one will behave as an anode one will behave as a cathode what will happen the anode will start corroding whereas cathode will not start corroding means one phase will go for the corrosion second phase will not corrode so over here if we have taken a material that is of the two metals one is known as an alpha one is known as an beta beta is behaving as an anode alpha is behaving as an cathode what will happen when you apply each and your alpha region will get corroded whereas sorry beta region will get corroded well as alpha region will not corrode so what will happen light will come back easily so bright appearance is there whereas due to the corrosion darker why because there is a scattering of the light which is taking place so for this particular reason why we are going we are going for the etchant process so what will happen by application of the etchant we can view under or we can bifurcate the different things under the microscope so always you have to apply the etchant and after that 5 to 10 minutes you directly go for the viewing under the microscope so that means we can find out the different or we can collect the different information by viewing under the microscope clear so now let us go for the next topic that is known as an sulfur printing what do you mean by this sulfur printing there are many different types of the impurities which are there inside any of the material impurities may exist in the steel products also 
it should be desirable that it should be in a very small amount if it is in a larger amount what will happen the properties of the material will get deteriorated so these impurities will affect directly on the mechanical properties of the steel which is the impurity majorly sulfur we are talking about the sulfur because if a sulfur is there inside a steel what will happen sulfur may exist chemically it will react with an iron and it will try to form the iron sulfate that is fes and due to that fes what is the effect fes is having a lower effect as compared to the particular iron so iron is not allowed to react with carbon as a result the properties will get deteriorated and it will form an fes fes iron sulfide so we have to avoid that iron sulfide so for that thing we are going for the manganese sulfide we are adding manganese so what will happen due to that thing it will reduce the sulfur that means it will react with manganese and as a slag it will remove away so sulfur is the important thing that we should know that how much quantity of sulfur is present inside the particular material so for that thing sulfur printing is an important thing how we can conduct the particular test so the procedure is like that the very first step what will be going sulfur printing defects and the permanent records are distribution in the steel so for that thing the surface of the material which is to be tested for that thing we have to make the surface smooth enough and the foreign particles like any type of the corrosion or the type of the paint color anything that should be removed the surface should also be free from the dirt and grease why because it will affect the particular sulfur printing so it should be free from the particular thing grinding after that what we'll be doing we will be grinding the surface on the emery paper of 1200 and after that through washing what will be happen it will be different types of the things will be removed and then after that we will be placing it that means we have taken a steel sample we have gone for the grinding up to 1200 after that wash the material and place the sample so by that what will happen the material is flat enough and the material is exposed so that we will take that sample in the further steps then the second step what will happen take a bromide paper soak under the particular aqueous solution of the sulfuric acid for three to four minutes take the bromide paper take a particular two percentage aqueous solution of the sulfuric acid and place or dip inside that thing for three to four minutes after that paper is removed from the acid and allowed to drain and free from the excess solution allow the excess solution to move away the emulsion side of the paper is then taken and taken directly in contact with our prepared specimen in the step one take the specimen place your bromide paper from HCL and place it with a side facing with each other for and apply pressure for one to two minutes after that what we'll be seeing step three the emulsion side of the paper is then in the direct contact with the prepared solution and remain in contact for one to two minutes after that take care that there should be no bubbles which are there inside the material as you are applying a toughened glass or the particular toughened glass on a mobile the same way you have to apply a bromide paper on a particular steel specimen so that there should be no bubbles why because if there is a bubble then at that particular portion we cannot find out the data so if there is any type of the bubbles which are there then it can be removed with the help of the rollers so that each and everything the bromide paper is directly in contact with your steel specimen and the reaction will start occurring which reaction will occur reaction which will be occurring that is fes which is there or which is formed inside the steel specimen this is our specimen h2so4 from where does h2so4 comes that is bromide paper by reacting it what will happen feso4 is formed and h2s is formed feso4 and h2s will form after that what you have to do in the step 4 after the reaction of the sulfuric acid with the sulfide region the steel produces that is hydrogen sulfide gas that sulfide gas will react with the silver bromide now what we will be doing take that bromide paper put that particular bromide paper inside the agf solution silver bromide solution agbr solution place that thing inside that thing after that the reaction will start 
and take out that thing and go for the particular happening that means what will happen that hydrogen sulfide on the bromide paper when you dip that bromide paper inside agbr that is a photographic things which we are using it so what will happen ag2s will be there and hbr will be formed hbr is a gas will remove away and h2s will be formed on that particular bromide paper and how does that ag2s looks like ag2s will look like a particular brown colored samples or the dot spots which are there on that thing we will be placing or we will be taking that photographic film for that 15 minutes after that the will be developing after that you can see on this sample these are the things the brownish color samples which is there they are rich in sulfur so we can find out what is this it is basically h2s is formed so this is how we can go for the sulfur printing and we can find out from that brown spots on a specimen we can find out that how much content of sulfur is there basically this is an olden age theories which are there where there are no modern technologies at that time we are using this sulfur printing and all but nowadays there is a spectroscopic meter and the new machines are formed which will directly give you the indication of the content of the particular steel samples okay so this was the thing of the sulfur printing the same thing which is there for the phosphorus if you want to find out the content of the phosphorus inside a steel we will be going for the phosphorus printing the procedure remains the same only the solution will be changing the same procedure is followed for the sulfur printing a steel sample is prepared in case of the sulfur printing same way we will be preparing for the phosphorus but in that what we have dipped we have dipped the bromide paper or we have reacted or the bromide paper with h2so4 here we will be taking the solution of the hno3 that means how the solution is prepared by ammonium molybdate to 35 to 40 ml of hno3 that means hno3 solution is taken for the phosphorus printing the soaked paper is placed in contact with the component as we are doing it in the sulfur printing after that the bromide paper is removed and it will be taken for the particular thing that is for the 35 percent hcl solution we will be dipping it and in that we are adding alum plus saturated stannous chloride solution is added and after that what will be happen due to that thing the phosphorus molybdenum area of the bromide will look like and due to that the brown color will be converted into blue color so which regions we will be getting we will be getting the blue color spots on the specimen and that blue color spots they will gives you an indication of the phosphorus the procedure is same except HNO3 is added and the alum and we will be going for the particular HCl solution in this phosphorus printing. The other than that the whole procedure is same as that of the sulfur printing. Clear? So the blue areas on the print indicate the phosphorus rich micro areas. And after that the last theory or the last topic of this particular chapter that is known as a magnetic testing what is this magnetic testing magnetic testing is used to distinguish between the ferrous and the non-ferrous material that means because of the magnetic metals means magnet will try to attract all the ferrous metal and non-ferrous will not behave or will not react for the magnets and in that way we can differentiate between the ferrous and the non-ferrous material with the help of this magnetic testing ferrous metals are the alloys of the iron and they usually stick to the magnet they are actually the three common type of the thing three common elements that pulls towards the magnet which are iron nickel and cobalt they are attracted towards the particular magnet non ferrous magnet do not react for the non metal that means except nickel and cobalt other than that each and every metal will do not react for the magnet that means we can bifurcate the material if you have been given an unknown samples you can bifurcate magnetic that means a ferrous and the non ferrous material how the procedure is followed first take a sample find a magnet after that place a magnet against the metal sample if your metal has been pulled by the magnet that means it will give you an indication of the ferrous if it do not behaves or if it do not react then it is a non-ferrous material clear if the magnet sticks to the metal alloy it is a ferrous or you can say nickel or the cobalt alloy clear 
so this is how you can go for the magnetic testing and here it ends this magnetic testing and here we also completes our unit that is known as a metallic material which are the topics we have studied in this whole unit the topics like first we have started with the different types of the structure which we can find out that is micro and macro structure which we can go after that how material fails the fracture we have seen ductile brittle fracture after that we have gone for the spark test for the different types of the spark we can find out which ferrous material is there then we have gone for the different types of the steps which are involved for the specimen preparation for viewing under microscope then we have studied about the construction and working of the metallurgical microscope then in today's lecture we have discussed about the sulfur printing phosphorus printing with that we have also discussed about how the ichant mechanism works how we can bifurcate the material by using the ichant how we can view under microscope and lastly the last theory which we discussed that was the magnetic testing theory clear so this was all about the topics which are covered in our metallic materials and in next lecture we will be starting with our new unit till then thank you